It is set to be a busy day on Capitol Hill. A live look at Congress for you. The House and Senate are both expected to vote on a three-month spending bill to temporarily avert a government shutdown through December. Well, the vote follows the release of a Senate report detailing some of the failures that occurred leading up to the failed July 13th assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania. According to the report, the committee finds that the USS failures in planning, communication, security, and allocation of resources for the Butler rally were foreseeable, preventable, and directly related to the events resulting in the assassination attempt that day. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now from Capitol Hill with more on this. Scott, it's pretty jarring because they're citing not just one failure, but multiple. What else is jumping out to you from this interim report and how are lawmakers reacting? Breakdowns in training, breakdowns literally of the equipment and breakdowns in communication. All of this, according to the congressional investigators, is simply unacceptable. Let me run you through some of the top lines, according to our CBS News review of this 94 page U.S. Senate report. The radio equipment carried by U.S. Secret Service on July 13th in Butler, Pennsylvania, broke down. They had radio system malfunctions, and according to this investigation, it wasn't the first time these radios had acted up. The Secret Service had a counter drone specialist on site who was not well trained, according to the Senate investigators, had been in the job for only three months and spent most of the day on a toll free helpline trying to get the equipment to work and it didn't work. And then all the missed warning signs in granular detail in this report, how the reports of somebody with a range finder near the site, near the podium, went unheeded for minutes, how somebody on the roof went unheated for minutes. How a counter sniper, knowing police were running toward that roof with guns drawn, didn't think to notify the team to get Trump off the stage. All of this included in this report, and the Senate's been pretty bipartisan on this, Errol, saying that changes have to be made by the Secret Service. They have to share more information, not stonewall, and likely need more money and better accounting for that money. But, Scott, it just seems so staggering, that list of failures. How is the Secret Service now responding? In a statement to CBS News, the Secret Service says a lot of what the Senate investigation found aligns with their own internal review, which has been ongoing since July 13th. They've released just a summary, but not the full report on what they found internally, that Donald Trump now has the highest level of security as he campaigns ahead of November 5th, and that they have been cooperative with investigators and rigorous with their own review. But it's noteworthy that the person who was the director of the Secret Service the day of this shooting, July 13th, is no longer the director of the Secret Service. And one quick question, Scott, on something that directs everybody or impacts everybody watching. Congress now poised to vote on the three-month spending bill to avoid a government shutdown. What's the latest on that? Should be a vote in the dinner hour in the U.S. House and then necessarily goes to the U.S. Senate next. This all could be done by midnight. But uh, this is not the most Herculean accomplishment. This is Congress's version of your kid has homework due Monday, and instead of doing it Friday night, they're going to do it on the bus Monday morning on the way to school. Uh, it gets done, I suppose, either way, but this is not the way to govern, and most members of Congress are wringing their hands about this. Love the Scott McFarlane analogies. Always. Thanks so much. Thanks, Scott.